Thank you, but I did leave a message for you. You said we should call you, and I did. I did not receive a response. So I'm happy but what? No, wait, but what well, was your question? about this question, so this is okay. a good chance. Thank you for calling on me, because you didn't return my call. I, I didn't get the message, and if you did, it normally comes in, and we have a whole staff that always yes, answers our constituents. Ned McCormick, and for you. Okay. So, Ask the question, I'll answer up here. I just wanted to let you know that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so you suspended the gun show at the county center after the Sandy Hook massacre in 2012. Yep. And this year you brought it back. The county legislature... <laughs> with great support from the public, passed a bill banning the gun show from the county center, a family-friendly, taxpayer-funded venue. And you vetoed that bill. Why did you decide to support the gun show at the county center this year? What has changed since 2012? Okay. Second Amendment. Listen, listen, I know this is a passionate issue on both sides, and I absolutely respect those who disagree with me on this issue. But let me answer the question because there's a little history involved in this too. The county center had hosted the sportsman show, the gun show, for a very long time. And there were never any incidents according to Parks and Rec or to law enforcement. The previous county executive decided for his own reasons to not permit it to go forward. And that was his choice. That was good. When I came into office, I was asked, when I came into office, I was asked, would we permit this show to come back? And my first questions were directed to law enforcement. Are there issues? Have we had issues? The answer was no, never. The second question was to Parks and Rec. The next, okay. the next, question, the next question I asked was from Parks and Rec. And they had said that it was always very well run. And quite frankly, the most attended, or one of the most attended events at the county center, as well as one of the biggest money makers for the county center. So with all those, so, If we, if we were asked and if somebody applied as a vendor, and I said, look, as long as the protocols are in place, then yes. Now, I'm getting to your question. Your question then was, why did we stop it after Sandy Hook? The reason why we did that... Let me answer the question. So, so the, the answer to that was, both sides agreed including the Second Amendment community, including the vendor, that nobody wanted the debate, the national debate on guns, to be here and then. And it certainly wasn't, with Newtown so close, we wanted to give space, quite frankly. So, now, since then, since, since then, we had been asked again if we would permit it, and we never had a ban. And so we had open dates, we allowed them to come in. The protocols, and this is very important, the protocols that we have put in place mirror those that the Attorney General has set up. Governor Cuomo, Governor oh. Cuomo permits gun shows on state property. There's one in the fairgrounds in Syracuse. There is one at the convention center in Albany. Ironically, in Albany, it was the same weekend as ours. So, even, so even the governor and the attorney general recognize that it should be permitted. It should, this is New York, too. And yes, it is our county. And by the way, hey, listen. Listen, I, I respect your viewpoint, but it's not the only viewpoint. We are a very diverse county. We are a very, very diverse county in all of our viewpoints. In our political viewpoints, in our socioeconomic status, in our religion. We are a very diverse county. And we should respect the other point of view as well. And so at that show, they had, in the previous years, about 5,000 people over the weekend. There were almost 8,000 people, law-abiding gun owners, women, men, I think this is a 
important because there is a complete misunderstanding about what a gun show is. And you cannot walk in. You cannot walk into a gun store or a gun show and walk out with a handgun. You cannot do that. Oh, you're the Nazi, so the baby. You're the Nazi. Process, and I think this is important. You're the Nazi. Hold on, hold on. Let's listen. Let's, 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 let me let's explain. explain. Let me explain the process because people say you walk in, you buy a gun, and you walk out. Nothing can be further from the truth. Long guns, in other words, uh, shotguns or rifles, you can, after you pass a background check, just as the same as you would do at Dick's Sporting Goods after you pass a background check there, you can walk out. That's state law. Even if you're mentally With regard Ill. to the yeah, handgun, you. Yeah. you have to, so in order to get a pistol permit application, and we have an enormous amount of people in this county with a pistol permit. We have an enormous surge of women who have applied for pistol permits for personal protection against domestic violence protect their family, save your mind, and they too have their right. And so you cannot walk in without having a pistol permit. When you purchase a gun in a gun store or a gun show, the serial number of that gun has to be sent to the county clerk's office. You have to get it on your permit, which takes a long time. And then and only then can you go back a week later or so and get your gun. So. I just want people to understand that you cannot walk in and walk out. Listen, the protocols that are in place are in place. She did ask the question, I answered. The protocols in place. Okay, hold on. There are people here that would like to hear the answer, and they should hear the answer. The protocols in place. The protocols in place are very strict. I just went through the process. You cannot walk in and walk out with a handgun. And it's the same rules that the state operates on and everyone else. Now, perversely, hold on a second. The legislation that was decided by the county board to ban was also my right to agree or disagree. That's the system that we have in this country. And so, when I vetoed it, it was for the following reasons. Number one, it is a right. Number two, we never had any issues there with law enforcement at all. And three, and three, to have a complete and utter ban, as was the wish, would have put this county very much potentially in legal jeopardy, and I wasn't going to do that either. So, People have the right. We may disagree. You may disagree. But people have a right. And I respect your point of view. I have a different one. And so too do many people in this county. Of One million people have various views on this, and we should respect that. And they are we're in overtime here. Just at this moment, we were supposed to end at 8 o'clock, so we're in overtime here. So let me take another question or two. I'm going to take two more. Um, yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, when you privatize public services, somebody makes a profit out of that. So somebody's going to make, be making a profit out of the privatization of the airport. Uh, parking garage spaces are going to go up. We're all going to pay somehow for that. How can you justify giving money to a private corporation to provide a public service at the same time as you cut 15% from the public service uh, uh, employees, workforce, 54% from transportation, 40% from mental health services, 30% from planning services, 30% from the parks, and 20% from the Board of Elections. Okay.
I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. We already have a private company running it. Okay, so this is not a new idea. It's been there since 1945, and we are paying this private company to run it. We have three county employees at the airport. Everyone else is Avports. That's the company that does the, the work for us. And so, and so the revenue, again, the revenue that comes into the airport is not permitted by federal law to be used for any other purpose like, as I mentioned, daycare or anything that we choose to use it for other than the airport. We would still, we would still have control and oversight of the airport. There is still a lease which permits them to do things and not do things. And the whole basic agreement of what we have, the protections that we have in the airport, as I mentioned, both the environmental protections as well as the surrounding communities, and what is permitted to be built or not built, that's all baked into the lease that both the county board and the administration have worked on. So, you know, with regard to the airport, we need to be looking at different ways to bring in revenue in all levels of government. Shared services that we do, and we've done a lot of shared services. Uh, for instance, Mount Kisco. We have saved a lot of money for the uh, village of Mount Kisco residents. They came to the county and asked for the county to take over the policing, and we did that. The county taxpayer didn't lose anything, but the village, uh, village uh, resident has saved a lot of money and got better service. So we're always looking to do those kind of things. And the answer, if the question is, why should we constantly, should we always stay the exact same on our employment level? Uh, that would be mismanagement, and we can't do that. We will work on what we need, and that's what we'll do. Patty, you want to go down the last question? Oh, boy. Pat Rose. Okay. Uh, we actually got a, a local question. <laughs> and I had, I called Ron Belmont, our mayor, and he said, my road, Purchase Street, is last year, two years ago, was a real mess. It was potholes, everybody was breaking their tires, and they're actually driving down that road. And Ron said, well, it's, just, it's not my road, it's a state road. And the state said, well, no, it's a county road. <laughs> they said, no, it's a town road. You know, I feel really privileged to live in Westchester. I we all feel the same way. But the roads, when I drive by and take the underpass to go on to 287, or when I try to get on to 95, my, I feel like I'm going to break down my car. Can we fix these roads? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 On, on, that, on that particular entrance, or whatever, we'll find out whose road it actually is. Yeah. What's that? Oh, I, sometimes I do. I know it's the snow and the ice and the... Yeah. But it's taken a beating. I mean, we all don't the roads maintain them regularly. Well, there is, as far as the county roads go, and that's a good question, as far as the county roads go, and most people have no idea when they're driving on a road whose road owns it. I don't even know half the time. Only anyone does, but you got to look it up. But we should, we understand that for the roads that we have, we have to maintain, but we can't do it all at once because it's an astronomical cost. But we do have, in our capital budget that I mentioned, the 300 million, we do have the schedule of the county roads that we're responsible for, for maintaining or repaving or fixing drainage, for instance, all those kind of things. So there is a schedule that we do each year. We can't get to them all in one year, uh, and some are more worse than others, if you will. Some of them have. Um, and we have worked, in fact, some of the things that we've done is we've turned over some of the roads that were our responsibility.